Hello and welcome to NTD News Today. I'm Kevin Hogan. Let's take a look at our top stories. The White House celebrated the nation's 245th birthday with a party and fireworks displays. President Joe Biden told the crowd that America is coming back together. Some prominent Republicans had a different message. West Coast Americans celebrated the country over the weekend. They tell us how they marked Independence Day and why. And demolition crews take down the Florida condo that had partially collapsed. What made them take it down so soon? And what does it mean for search and rescue efforts? A terminal at Newark Liberty International Airport was evacuated following a security breach. The Port Authority Police Department says the evacuation followed after a customer exited through a security door. The incident triggered a heavy police presence around the airport. It's not clear if the customer made a mistake or intentionally used the restricted door, but the person was arrested. Passengers needed to get screened again before returning to the terminal. The incident occurred on one of the busiest travel days and is part of this year's July 4th holiday weekend. In a sign of things returning to normal after the pandemic, President Joe Biden hosted a party and fireworks display at the White House for July 4th. Biden told the guests that America is coming back together. Hosting the biggest event of his presidency so far, Joe Biden held a barbecue and fireworks display at the White House. About 1,000 people attended the party, including military families and pandemic response workers. 245 years ago, we declared our independence from a distant king. Today, we are closer than ever to declaring our independence from a deadly virus. Later, he watched the annual fireworks display from the White House balcony with the First Lady. Guests at the White House were not required to have vaccines or wear a mask. And unlike with other recent holidays, the White House encouraged Americans to go out and celebrate. Despite celebrations in large crowds across the country, South Dakota was denied a permit to hold their traditional fireworks display at Mount Rushmore. South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem told Fox News that they met all of the requirements to hold the event, but she thought the Biden administration denied the permit for political reasons. Well, that's a lot of people. Thank you. One day before the 4th, former President Donald Trump celebrated the holiday by holding a rally with thousands of his supporters in Sarasota, Florida. In a speech at the event, he blasted Biden's performance as president. He pledged that Republicans would take back the House and Senate and save America. The World Key Lime Pie Eating Championship took place in Key West, Florida to mark Independence Day. The contest took place with Tropical Storm Elsa looming. Wearing safety goggles with hands clasped behind their backs, 25 contestants plunged face first into nine inch pies and scarfed down the region's signature dessert. Seattle resident Nicholas Luera won the contest. He finished an entire pie in two minutes and 13.5 seconds. These key lime pies are made with condensed milk, egg yolks, juice from the region's key limes, and a graham cracker crust. Contestants have the option to wear goggles because of the layers of whipped cream on top. Tropical Storm Elsa is expected to head towards the Florida Straits soon and pass near the Florida Keys early Tuesday. Boston held its annual 4th of July parade celebrating the 245th anniversary of the Declaration of Independence. It featured marches by the Continental Army and a reading of the Founding Fathers document. Bostonians started celebrating Independence Day with the Pledge of Allegiance at City Hall. Then residents listened to stories about John Hancock and other founding fathers at the cemetery beside Freedom Trail. They paraded to the old state house where the ancient and honorable artillery captain read the document, which lays out the unalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. The Declaration of Independence that the Continental Congress adopted was read to Bostonians on July 18, 1776. And on Sunday, Middlesex County volunteers dressed as Continental Army soldiers marched through the streets. The city's mayor expressed gratitude to the residents who lift up the values and ideals of the nation and to the members of the armed services who protect it. And I am so grateful 
for all of our servicemen and women who protect our nation every single day, whether here, on our land, or away. We hear from a volunteer who wanted to participate in the event last year, but it was shut down due to the pandemic. Right. It's extra special, obviously, not, not being able to leave our houses in the past year. And, and this was my first event in Boston, and it's extra special on the 4th of July. And uh, God bless America. The celebration concluded with a spectacular fireworks display in Boston Common. A fireworks celebration in downtown Ocean City, Maryland, has been canceled. The decision was made after fireworks being set up for the city's 4th of July celebration accidentally exploded. Employees at the fireworks company sustained minor injuries in the blast. They declined to go to the hospital, and no other beach or boardwalk visitors were injured as a result of the explosion. First responders initially thought a car was on fire, but when they arrived at the scene, they discovered the unintentional discharge. The show was set to begin with musical guests at 8 p.m. Patriotism and festivity filled the air in California this weekend. Our reporters on the ground hear from Americans celebrating the country's 245th birthday. NTD's David Lamb brings us more. This is one of the many 4th of July parades in California, and residents are happy and excited to be back out here celebrating Independence Day. What do you think the importance of Independence Day is? It's really just the freedom and being able to celebrate it all together. One of our favorite parts of it, just local community of all cultures and diversities. We're excited to celebrate the barbecues with the families, America's independence, fireworks uh, in the community. Celebrating the fact of all the freedoms that sometimes we take for granted here. On July 4th, 1776, the 13 American colonies signed the Declaration of Independence, separating from England. This eventually led to the formation of the United States. Well, I'm here for the 4th of July parade to celebrate American independence from the British colonies back in uh, 1776 is the birth of the American nation. It feels really good. It feels good to see people without their masks. It feels good to be able to be out with my kids and celebrating. And Do you want to say anything? Uh, hey, hey happy 4th of July. I love the parade. Dogs, donkeys, and horses also participate, and some even put on a show. Americans take the streets of Morgan Hill, Huntington Beach, and San Diego, donning the U.S. flag. Last year we were unable to enjoy the freedom of being here because of COVID-19, and this year for sure brings back a sense of normalcy. And we just look forward to the parade and many people that are like thinking like us that enjoy uh, American heritage. It's just great to get back to having an event where we can be together, we can celebrate together safely, responsibly. Independence Day has been a federal holiday in the U.S. since 1941. Its tradition dates back to the 18th century. This year, it's observed on Monday, July 5th. I am the daughter of a man in the Navy and the sister of a man in the Navy and the mother of a girl in the Army and the mother of a, girl, of a boy in the Army and my son-in-law is in the Navy. My favorite color is red, white, and blue. And we are celebrating 4th of July, America's birthday, and I'm just grateful. Thrilled. Thrilled to death. <laughs> it, it was a little hard to get a spot because normally we have to reserve. It brings everyone together. We remember the people that have died for our freedom. Although many dozens of floats and marching bands came from various groups, they all share one thing in common, appreciating the country and spreading positivity. David Lamb, NCD News, California. Just ahead, hundreds of Georgians celebrate Independence Day with a Republican Freedom Rally. Government officials and 2022 candidates tell us what motivates them to fight for American values. And the largest teachers union in the United States votes to boost support for critical race theory. The union describes the theory as both reasonable and appropriate for school curricula. Find out more here on NTD News. The remaining part of the Florida condo that partially collapsed is now down too, but this time it's thanks to demolition crews. And today's Jessica Beatty has the details. Demolition crews brought down the rest of the partially collapsed Florida condo Sunday night. 
Miami-Dade's mayor says it went exactly as planned. As far as this demolition, it was picture perfect. Exactly what we were told would happen happened. She signed an emergency order Friday to bring it down as soon as possible. Before, officials said it could take weeks. Concerns were it would fall down on its own as a tropical storm approaches. Uh, honestly, this precise moment, I feel relief. I feel relief because this building was unstable. The building was hampering our search efforts. Rescuers hope the demolition will give them access to parts of the garage area that are a focus of interest. One local says he's glad they moved the demolition forward. Um, especially in emergency situations, it shouldn't be weeks to do something. Uh, you got to cut red tape right away, and it shouldn't have taken the storm because we have our rescue workers there, and it, and it was shifting. The demolition halted search efforts, but not for long. Some families had asked to return to the building to retrieve personal items before the demolition, but they were not allowed. It's been confusing, and it's really heartbreaking for the families involved emotionally, and. You know, they're told one thing one day and another thing the other day, and, and it's tough. Uh, but this is a tough process, and it's devastating for everybody. As of Sunday, 24 people are confirmed dead, and over 120 are still missing, including the sister of Paraguay's first lady, along with her family and their nurse. The nurse's mother arrived in Florida Saturday, awaiting news of the daughter. Surfside Mayor Charles Burkett told CBS News Sunday that the operation continues to be a search and rescue. And as far as he's concerned, it'll go on until everyone's pulled out of the debris. Jessica Beatty, NTD News. This weekend in Metro Atlanta, hundreds of Georgians celebrated Independence Day with a Republican Freedom Rally. Government officials and 2022 candidates told NTD what motivates them to fight for American values, and attendees shared what they believe makes America the land of the free. NTD's Melina Weiskup has the story. Many describe America as a unique land where a promise of freedom to its people reigns supreme. What principles make this freedom possible? That is the Declaration of Independence. One of the greatest phrases that are found in there is it says we hold these truths, truths that are definitive. They're not up for negotiation. They're not up for discussion. They're not a debate. They're unalienable. And some say now is a pivotal moment to uphold these principles because they're under attack. Latham Sadler saw the threats firsthand while he served in the Trump administration as the director for intelligence programs on the National Security Council. One of them is the rise of, of communist China. And I, I got all the briefings in the Situation Room and what they're doing to seek to harm us. And they're moving out hard and fast and they're hungry and focused and eager to supplant us. And you look around America and it's like most folks have their heads in the sand. Sadler's now running against Senator Raphael Warnock for U.S. Senate. Georgia Congressman Barry Loudermilk, who's running for re-election, says the key is to return to the foundation. We have to stand vigilant that it's the American people that matter. It's not a big government. We have to go back to the ideas of our founders, that it is about the people, and the rights are invested in the people, and the government's job is to protect those rights. And Georgia's Vernon Jones, who's running for governor, vows to make Georgia a constitutional sanctuary state if elected. We're going to make sure in Georgia, we're going to ban critical race theory. It's important also in Georgia to maintain its gun rights. I'm a Second Amendment guy. I believe in the Second Amendment. We're going to make Georgia a constitutional carry state. Nobody's going to dilute our ability to have a gun. He's challenging the current governor, Brian Kemp, who touts his strong support for businesses as a major success, especially amidst the pandemic. If you remember, we're the first state in the country to reopen. Georgia's next election is in 2022, with a race for governor and a Senate seat up for grabs. Melina Weisskopf, NTD News. An Arizona newspaper files a lawsuit against the GOP-led state Senate and a contractor to obtain information about the audit of the 2020 election results in Maricopa County. The Arizona Republic said it has filed a special action in Maricopa County Superior Court seeking financial records and communications about the audit from the Arizona Senate and Cyber Ninjas. A lawyer for the newspaper said the lawsuit and records have to be disclosed under Arizona law because a public body is orchestrating the audit. Cyber Ninjas was hired by the state Senate to handle the audit. It previously asked a court to keep its procedures secret. Last month, the audit team finished the hand count portion of the audit, but have more to do before issuing a final report. The largest teachers union in the United States votes to promote critical race theory, describing it as a reasonable and appropriate framework for students to understand America's past and present. Here are the details. 
The National Education Association, or NEA, is furthering its support of critical race theory. It recently passed a resolution committing over $120,000 to advance its support for the theory known as CRT. Making up the largest U.S. teachers union, the organization vows to oppose attempts to ban the highly controversial 1619 project. It claims the United States was founded on a racist nation. The new business item on its website calls it reasonable and appropriate for curriculum to be informed by critical race theory. Prior to the vote, the union approved another measure, this one seeking to research anti-CRT organizations. According to the NEA's website, the reason behind the measure is increasing opposition from organizations like the Heritage Foundation. The Washington-based conservative think tank hosts vocal opponents of CRT, including author and filmmaker Christopher Rufo. He's written extensively to expose CRT's Marxist origins, saying it undermines the foundations of American society and has infiltrated schools, businesses, and government agencies. He posted on Twitter that we were born for this fight and will show no mercy to the corrupt ideologues who are ruining American education. Coming up, Wimbledon will have full capacity seating starting Tuesday. It's the first UK sporting event to drop capacity restrictions since the pandemic started. Cowboys and rodeo shows, a tradition of the wild, wild west, and Californians enjoyed its 60-year anniversary over the weekend. More on that in just a moment. If you're like most of us, you're probably getting fed up with the nonsense that's going on in the banking system. Did you know that top U.S. banks have recently amended their depositor terms and conditions? to include the words bank failure and what's required of you in 24 hours if, or should I say when, it happens? Don't get blindsided by your bank. Call GSI Exchange today to pick up your complimentary copy of the Bank Failure Survival Guide at 866-424-2382. We'll also send you the required format to file with your bank within 24 hours of their failure, which is now required by the top banks to avoid freezing of your funds. Yes, the top banks can now freeze your money. The world is in a strange place and banks are constantly changing the rules. So stay on top of the current events that really matter by calling GSI Exchange and requesting your free guide at 866-424-2382. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, inventor of MyPillow. Thanks to your support, you've helped make MyPillow become one of the fastest growing companies in America. I'm interrupting this commercial right now. Retailers have canceled my pillow. And to thank you for your support, I'm going to pass the savings directly on to you. Go to mypillow.com right now to get deep discounts on all my pillow products. For example, you can get my premium my pillows regularly $69.98, now just $29.98, the lowest price ever. The wait is finally over. Shen Yun returns to the stage with an all-new production filled with beauty, majesty, and a powerful message of hope. Discover the lost culture of ancient China. Discover this season, Shen Yun 2021. Coming to the Palace Theater, July 24th and 25th. Tickets at shenyun.com slash Stanford 888-90-SHOWS. Wimbledon will start to have maximum capacity crowds as CCP virus restrictions on attendance are relaxed. It's the first return of full capacity crowds at sporting events in the UK since the pandemic started. The first week of Wimbledon ran smoothly, but attendance was capped at 50% since the start of the tournament. But next weekend's finals are set to have 100% of seats filled in the 15,000 seat capacity of Wimbledon's center court. Full capacity seating in the stands will start from Tuesday's women's quarterfinals. Those matches will take place on center court as well as the over 1,200 seat number one court. Wimbledon is being used as a pilot event for the safe return of crowds as part of a government program. Over the July 4th weekend, Californians gathered for the 60th year to enjoy one of the longest standing rodeos in the state. Folsom Pro Rodeo was the first major historical event in California, marking the ability for large crowds to once again celebrate the American spirit. Reporting by Jim Chong. 
very exciting historic time here over in Folsom, California at the Folsom Pro Rodeo. And this is truly a grand reopening. And I will tell you, it's not just business, but fun, open air is reopened in California. People dressed in Western attire and formed long lines in the heat waiting for the rodeo's gate to open. It's been a long time since large crowds are allowed at events. So far, everything looks fantastic. I mean, people seem to be very excited about being out and about again. Uh, I'm not really seeing anybody that appears to be concerned with uh, the virus still being around, and, and it looks like they're all going to have a really good time. Rodeos with cowboys, open land, and good family fun are part of the American culture. Over 5,000 people gathered for the sold-out opening night. This is a community-based event. It celebrates the 4th of July. It celebrates patriotism. It celebrates the core values of the West, and it's all in one event, and I think that's what people love about it. Sharon Williams and her late husband, Digger Jim Williams, have been involved with the Folsom Rodeo since its inception 60 years ago. Because of the legendary Digger Jim Williams. He's my husband, and we're still here to live his legacy throughout, however long that can be here. And my children and grandchildren. One crowd's favorite is a program that is near and dear to William's heart. She's worked really hard to make the mutton busting program into a big success. Little kids that today are 30 are still talking about their experience as a mutton buster. And it's all thanks to Sharon and what she brought to that program. So. Mutton busting is where the kids come on, the little ones, five, four, five, six year olds, and they have to hold on to the sheep. And the sheep takes them for a ride, and whoever can hold on to the sheep for the longest is the winner. I think it's an amazing opportunity for us to all get together, celebrate uh, 4th of July, and we hope to continue doing this because we need this. Our community needs this, and uh, yeah, it's amazing to just uh, be able to celebrate. I'm actually elated to see everything open. It feels very American. It feels very, it's, there's so much excitement. Everyone's having a great time, and I'm so happy to be here and Free, it feels like. The Folsom Pro Rodeo is truly a family event filled with music and food. People are eager for life to get back to normal again. Jim T. Chong, NTD News, California. That's all for now. Catch us again tonight at 6.30 Eastern. In New York City, I'm Kevin Hogan. A new channel. Subscribe to us on YouTube at NTD News. Get the highlights of our news broadcast and the most important headlines that we curate especially for you. Don't let YouTube decide what information you get. That's your choice. YouTube is deleting our videos and cuts you off from a source of honest reporting. Make sure you don't lose access to NTD's news content and take a quick moment to subscribe to our newsletter so no matter what happens here, you'll keep your access to a trustworthy news source.